I'm here with Greg Ayers, and we're going to discuss his time at IkiCon here. Now, before we get into that, actually, um, two years ago, you had some health issues, right? Yeah, um, I actually had a heart attack at this convention. Um, having a heart attack at a convention is probably not the place you would choose to do that. But then again, you would never choose to have a heart attack, I guess. Um, this is such a different world to be in. So to be in a kind of an emergency situation uh, makes that a little dire. Um, luckily, because prior to the conventions, the convention organizers and I had been talking about um, some things that we could do to improve. Uh, since I work for another convention, I actually work for three conventions now. I'm always talking to the organizers, like, "Hey, why don't you know? Have you ever thought about doing this?" And one of the things that we had talked about was medical staff, someone on staff, and there was a guy named Doug who is actually an EMT, and he was their medical person. And Doug was the first person that got to me, and they took my blood pressure, and he was like, "No, dude, you have to go right now." Um, so I was lucky because. Had it been up to me, I just thought I was sick. Um, uh, so having a heart attack at a convention is, is one thing because then of course I was taken out on a stretcher and before my brother could even get back to the hotel, the rumors were so ridiculous that I'd overdosed, even though I don't do drugs, uh, that I had gotten in a fight with a cop and like, just because it's a convention, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, did you see this? Um, my favorite last year when I got here, this guy was like, you look amazing. You, you, I can't even tell anything happened. And I was like, what did you think happened to me? Someone had told him I had, I had fallen eight stories down an empty elevator shaft that I was trying to catch an elevator and I'd stepped into an empty elevator shaft. And I was like, that's punk rock, but that's not what happened. <laughs> like, I don't think I would have liked to fall five, eight flights uh, in an elevator shaft. But um, I was lucky I was in Austin. I ended up at the best hospital I could have ever been at, at uh, Seton, Brackenridge, uh, just blocks from the hotel, and uh, had great doctors, and had the best kind of heart attack you could have, because it was the heart attack that says, hey, stop doing what you're doing, stop smoking, stop eating garbage. Um, a very dear friend of ours, the creator of Robotech, later that year had a massive heart attack and just dropped dead and none of us knew he had heart problems or anything like that so I had a good heart attack as far as I'm concerned um, but uh, I guess what makes it so different is uh, the support of the convention community in that and something that is probably not really well known but you know actors don't have health insurance we just can't afford it um, we sacrifice a lot of things in the name of having a cool job and a job that we feel passionate about uh, but it's a moment like that when you realize how much something like that could set you back. I had two factors helping me out. One, again, the hospital was amazing, and they wrote off all but about $11,000 of the bill. Um, now, there are other people like ambulance companies and anesthesiologists and people like that. Um, but I had that, and I also had IkiCon used their charity auction to try to raise money and I think a percentage of that went to help me out and so there was that for the initial costs and that was like three or four thousand dollars that they just gave me to try to help out and um, then later when we finally found out the total which wasn't bad um, that's my rude cell phone going off uh, uh, another convention that considers my brother and I just a part of their family raised the rest of the money and paid off the rest of my medical bills um, that's something I could have never done by myself. And I'll forever be indebted to that. those two conventions. Uh, I had to cancel going to England. I was invited to a convention in England this year, and I couldn't go, because how can I say, hey, sorry, I'd rather go to England than hang out with the people that you know kind of took care of me. So, And they're great people. I would have done that for them anyway. But um, it amazes me what conventions have done, not just for me, but for other people. Um, our friend Bob and Emily DeJesus lost a sister to a 10-year battle with cancer, and uh, a convention that never even met them but knows their involvement in the convention community just sent the money to help with the funeral costs. So um, when you get, you know, when you get past the long registration lines and the, you know, loud music or the cosplay contest, there are a lot of really great people that make up the convention community, and people that really take care of each other so like I said I was lucky <laughs> I was at a convention when it happened so I, I'm I'm very glad it's over I'm very glad to be in good health but I'm also uh, feel very blessed that I had the people around me that I did because 
I could have turned out totally different. That could have been a bad ending to that story, but it wasn't, luckily. Um, and that was at this hotel, right? Yeah, it was actually at this hotel. In fact, it's kind of creepy because when I when I came here last year for my first, uh, you know, my first convention back, um, I, I checked into the room, and even though it wasn't the same room, it looked just like the room I'd had the heart attack in. And actually, I hadn't had the heart attack, but that's where I was taken to the hospital. I had the heart attack at the hospital, but... Uh, but so I said something to the bell guy. I was like, wow, this, this room looks kind of familiar. And he goes, oh, you've stayed at a Hilton before. I was like, uh, no, I had a heart attack in this hotel. He's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. So, uh, so it's weird. And, you know, my family and all get a little weird about the hotel because they were here. And in the, my mom was like, wow, this parking garage looks familiar. But, um, but it was one of those things. It was me. It was not the hotel. So, but, yeah, it was here. It was at this hotel. And the funniest thing, I guess the thing that nobody knows, I found my replacement DJ while I was right, right as they told me I was having a heart attack. They're like, you're having a heart attack. And I was like, oh, hang on, David, I need you to find Ken Wall. And like, so my friend said, you're the only person that would be worried about a replacement DJ while you're having a heart attack. But, uh, and then I got to repay him. He was in Iraq. He works for MeccaCon and he was in Iraq, uh, or, no, I had done that first. He, I had done that for him. I DJed for him while he was in Iraq, and he was on leave here. And so I was like, hey, can you do me a favor? So we both helped each other out. So it was kind of cool.